I welcome you all to the session of thermal engineering basic and applied and today we shall discuss about rather we shall identify several factors those affect the nozzle efficiency and then we shall solve one numerical problem on the flow nozzle. So, uh, I mean before going to discuss about or identify those factors. So, first of all we need to identify the, the factors which are you know very important considering their influential role on the efficiency of the nozzle and then we shall discuss about their actual role. So, you know that uh, it is better to write the nozzle efficiency that we could derive in the last class that is the mathematical expression. What is the mathematical expression of the nozzle efficiency? So, if I write nozzle efficiency and we could express mathematically as the actual heat drop that due to isentropic process. In other word you know the actual gain in kinetic energy that to that due to isentropic process. So, basically you know uh, if we write that is H 1 minus H 2 prime divided by H 1 minus H 2. So, this quantity that is the actual heat drop right. So, that that, that that is not the that is the real you know ideal heat drop sorry. So, this is not the actual heat drop. So, this is the ideal heat drop and this quantity is the actual heat drop. We also could relate this quantity to the velocity. So, you know if we if we write this so, this is again nothing but C 2 prime square minus C 1 square divided by C 2 square minus C 1 square. So, that is we also can write. So, basically this is the you know actual gain in kinetic energy of the stream at is as it it is passing through the nozzle to the to that due to isentropic process I am telling this is the ideal gain in kinetic energy of the stream as it passes through flow nozzle. So, you know that we also uh, have discussed that this nozzle efficiency can be written like this. So, this we can write considering the fact that C 1 is much much less than C 2 and this quantity essentially the you know what I can write that is the velocity coefficient k n square or psi square. So, this k n or psi this is the velocity coefficient. right. So, this is the velocity coefficient for the nozzle. Now, the value of this coefficient that I have you know uh, discussed in the last class that it varies from 0 0.93 to 0 0.97 depending on the surface uh, properties of the internal surface of the nozzle. So, if the surface is very rough then k n will be uh, very uh, uh, I mean k n would be uh, little away from 1, if it is really you know relatively uh, I mean smoother then it should be closer to 1. So, you can understand you know that uh, C 2 square by C 2 square. So, basically that you have studied in fluid mechanics C 2 prime square equal to k n into uh, so square into C 2 square or I can write this is C 2. So, you know that you can see this relation 
that if k n equal to 1 that is if the surface is atomistically smooth then uh, uh, the there is no frictional effect and the velocity actual velocity is equal to the velocity that is obtained by considering the flow rather by modeling the flow uh, as an isentropic process. So, uh, uh, that, that is by modeling the flow process by an isentropic process. So, this is the case. Now, question is having established the expression of nozzle efficiency, let us now look at what are the several factors those affect the nozzle efficiency. So, you can understand that uh, in reality, so if we write that nozzle efficiency eta nozzle that equal to h 1 minus h 2 prime divided by h 1 minus h 2. So, this is the ideal heat drop, this is the actual heat drop and also you can approximate that is C 2 uh, prime square divided by C 2 square. So, basically when there is a flow of steam through a nozzle or any channel, we have studied in fluid mechanics that frictional effect or frictional losses cannot be neglected, trivially neglected to be precise. So, the frictional effect cannot be trivially neglected, whatever the you know magnitude frictional losses is there, frictional losses are there. So, basically you know that uh, uh, it depends on the fluid viscosity, it also depends on the uh, uh, surface roughness, surface properties. So, basically properties of the surface rather bounding surface. So, when there is a flow through a confinement, the that confinement is bounded by several surfaces. So, the properties of those surfaces also play an important role to dictate the frictional loss. So, what we can figure out today now that we know friction tends to decrease the velocity. Why? Because that is the resistance. So, we have studied in fluid mechanics that if the surface is having roughness, it is because of this roughness, you know, it is because of this roughness velocity of fluid very close to the surface equal to 0. So, it provides a resistance to the flow. So, velocity will decrease not only that it is because of this reason the temperature of fluid which is passing through a confinement will increase. So, basically it, 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 it hits up the fluid uh, basically which is being uh, transported through the nozzle. So, what will happen you know at least we have identified why I am talking about friction because to model the flow through a nozzle we have assumed that the you know it is it is it is uh, it can be uh, modeled uh, by an isentropic process. So, if we assume that the process is an isentropic process, we have considered that the frictional loss is absent, there is no heat loss from the flowing stream to the surroundings through the walls. So, basically we have considered first factor is the friction or frictional losses. So, factors those affect the nozzle efficiency, factors affect nozzle efficiency. Now, question is, so if friction increases, if friction increases fluid temperature will increase right if fluid temperature increase if fluid temperature increases then heat drop that we have written over here this is the ideal heat drop but that is not, that is that we are not supposed to get so the i mean depending on the case to case suppose in one case surface roughness is there in other case surface roughness is even more severe so if we consider these two cases you know we will be getting relatively higher heat drop in the former case, while in the later case heat drop will be less, because more is the surface roughness, more will be the temperature of the fluid which is passing through the you know, you know confinement and heat drop will be less. So, basically increases 
uh, fluid temperature and it decreases heat drop. This is quite trivial. So, basically if the temperature of fluid increases then definitely the heat drop that is if we consider this is the confinement through which steam is passing or flowing and suppose this is section 2 2 and this is section 1 1 and if the surface is very rough. So, there is and the nozzle surfaces are insulated. So, basically it is because of this uh, uh, you know insulation that is provided at the outer periphery of the nozzle there is no heat leakage. So, our objective is to minimize heat transfer from the flowing stream to the surroundings, but it is because of the friction fluid temperature at the exit of the nozzle will increase. Suppose, if it is temperature T 1 this is T 2. Now, if T 2 increases because of this frictional effect then T 1 minus T 2 will decrease. So, that is the decreases the heat drop. Not only that this frictional effect will also try to reduce the velocity. So, velocity it also decrease decreases the fluid velocity. So, basically let us quickly review what is the effect of friction. Number 1 friction. So, if it is friction you know so, if friction increases heat drop will reduce velocity of steam at the exit will reduce. So, basically if we write this eta nozzle that equal to h 1 minus h 2 prime divided by h 1 minus h 2 that is nothing but c 2 prime square divided by c 2 square. So, if if friction increases C 2 prime will be lesser. So, the effect is eta nozzle will be less. So, efficiency of the nozzle will reduce. So, that means our objective should be to have a surface of the or internal surface of the nozzle internal surfaces of the nozzle closer to a very smooth surface. So, it is very unlikely to have a surface which would be atomistically smooth or objective should be to have a surface closer to that one. So, so, so that we can minimize the frictional effect to we can increase the fluid velocity at the exit. So, that efficiency of the nozzle will increase. Our our ultimate aim is to get higher fluid velocity at the exit of the nozzle because we want to have a jet of steam. So, this is one number two let me discuss here number two is see this is basically something which is again related to friction. So, velocity. So, this is the main factor now I will be discussing about velocity, but you can see the velocity is directly linked to the frictional effect. So, now what will happen you know that if we increase, so if the friction is less, so when friction is less, right, why I am talking about, see now question is when you are talking about a nozzle, when you are talking about a flow nozzle, say this is the flow nozzle. So, this is section 2 2, this is section 1 1. I would like to write one important thing that C 1 is fixed because that steam is coming out from steam turbine steam uh, generator boiler C 1 is fixed. So, this is inlet condition ok. Exit pressure is also fixed right. 
and if we try to write if we try to map the process in H s plane. So, this is 1, this is p 1, this is p 2, so this is 2. So, the inlet condition 1 is fixed, process is isentropic, hence the outlet velocity c 2 is also fixed. So, c 1 is fixed, inlet condition is fixed, exit pressure is also fixed and process is isentropic that means, outlet condition is also fixed. That means, that means C 2 is also fixed, right. Now, if C 1 is fixed and C 2 is fixed because C 1 is not there even in this expression because C 1 the magnitude of C 1 is very, very less as compared to C 2. So, basically from this particular you know from this analysis we can understand C 2 is also fixed. So, if this is the fixed, so if we can play this C 2 prime perhaps we can modulate the efficiency of the flow nozzle. So, when friction is less, when friction is less then fluid velocity will less. So, friction less means frictional resistance is less. So, velocity at the exit of the flow nozzle will be high. So, when friction is less C 2 prime will be more. So, basically when we even we are talking about the actual case, even in actual scenario if frictional resistance reduces velocity, actual velocity will be more. So, efficiency eta nozzle will be more. So, if we try to understand the effect of velocity on the flow nozzle carefully, it is again directly related to the frictional effect. So, this is about 2. Finally, if we look at the last factor that is 3 that is length of the nozzle. So, we have, we have, we have identified that if frictional friction increases C 2 will reduce efficiency will reduce. If velocity increases that is again because of less friction if velocity increases actual velocity I am talking about because C 1 is fixed and C 2 is also fixed that is why I have written these three lines. So, if frictional resistance is less actual velocity will be more efficiency will be more. So, this is the you know conclusion. Finally, length of the nozzle. So, now let us see how we can relate this effect, we can relate this particular factor to the efficiency to, to the frictional effect of the flowing stream. Say if length increases, if length increases we have studied from fluid mechanics that frictional resistance loss due to frictional effect depends on length right. So, basically if friction if length increases fix frictional effect on the flowing stream. will be more. If we have, so now we could relate the effect of length to the frictional effect, now remaining part is straight forward. So, if length is in length increases, frictional resistance will be more, if friction uh, frictional resistance is more, velocity at the exit of the nozzle will be less and efficiency will be less. So, hence actual velocity C 2 prime will be less, hence nozzle efficiency 
will be lesser. Why I am talking about actual velocity? Because to arrive at this particular point C 1 is fixed that is inlet condition right, exit pressure is also fixed. process is isentropic hence C 2 is fixed or C 2 will be fixed. Okay, C 2 is fixed right. So, that means inlet conditions are constant that we have discussed in the last class when someone is designing the nozzle, he or she also needs to know the exit pressure. Knowing the exit pressure that means and also we know the process is isentropic, because if we can, if we go back to the previous slide. So, the process is isentropic, P 2 is fixed, inlet condition 1 is fixed and process is isentropic that means velocity C 2 will be fixed. So, for a given value of C 2, if length of the nozzle increases frictional resistance will be more which in turn will reduce the actual velocity of steam leaving the nozzle and ultimate consequence is the reduction in nozzle efficiency that we have discussed. Okay. So, with this you know we have discussed about the factors we have identified several factors those directly or indirectly affect the nozzle efficiency. What we have understood most importantly you have understood that it is the frictional effect which is very very important to be looked at while someone designing the flow nozzle because it directly affect the heat drop. Nozzle efficiency is directly related to the heat drop. So, we could relate the gain in kinetic energy to the heat drop using steady flow energy equation. So, the frictional heating will increase the fluid temperature. So, the actual heat drop in real applications will be less. So, higher the frictional resistance lesser will be the heat drop, if lesser is the heat drop nozzle efficiency will be less. So, this is what we could identify and we have discussed. So, we have to stop today and we shall continue our discussion with this problem in the next class. Thank you. Mm -hmm.